When I say the name Trayvon Martin, does it mean anything to you? If it doesn't, it should. This is Trayvon Martin. He was a 17-year-old African-American student who was shot and killed on February 26th. And there is still much about this case that we do not know. But here are the undisputed facts so far. When his killer first saw him, Trayvon was not breaking any laws. He was walking down a Sanford, Florida street a bit after 7 p.m. after purchasing a bag of candy and an iced tea. He was unarmed. 28-year-old George Zimmerman was a neighborhood watch volunteer on patrol that night. He saw Trayvon and thought he was suspicious and reported this to the police. In fact, the 911 call Zimmerman made is now online at orlandosentinel.com. Let's listen. This guy looks like he's up to no good or he's on drugs or something. It's raining and he's just walking around looking about. Pause for a second. Walking around and looking about. That's what Zimmerman found so suspicious about Trayvon. Let's listen to more of his call. Is he white, black, or Hispanic? He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah, a dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and either jeans or sweatpants and white tennis shoes. Something's wrong with him. Yeah, he's coming to check me out. He's got something in his hands. I don't know what his deal is. On the 911 call, Zimmerman goes on to tell police dispatch that he was following Trayvon, and they told him not to. Moments later, Trayvon Martin was dead from a gunshot wound to the chest. Zimmerman was questioned. He claimed self-defense and that he feared for his life. He has not been arrested. He has not been charged. Trayvon's family wants justice and are calling for a federal investigation. Their attorney had this to say. We understand it. And for him not to be arrested is just an atrocity. It's all the world is watching. And we want to know what the Sanford Police Department, the state attorney's office, and the state of Florida is going to do. All the world is watching to see how this is going to conclude. We want an arrest. It had been more than 17 days. We want an arrest. We want an arrest. How many nights do they have to go to bed knowing that the killer of their son is walking around free? And here is where, at this point, facts remain unknown. When Zimmerman stepped out of his vehicle and spoke to Trayvon, what happened between them? Other 911 calls from neighbors indicate that there was some sort of physical altercation. Screaming can be heard in the background, and Trayvon's family says the screams are his. But police maintain that there is not sufficient evidence to show that Zimmerman didn't really fear for his life. So he remains free. And here's why. It's a law called Stand Your Ground, first passed in Florida in 2005 and now law in 17 states. It says that a person has the right to stand his or her ground and to meet force with force, including deadly force, if he or she reasonably believes it is necessary to do so to prevent death or great bodily harm to himself or herself or another. Laws like that make modern-day vigilantism that can have these kinds of tragic consequences. And let's be clear, this is not an isolated incident. If you go to our blog, you'll see that too many young black men are losing their lives to mistaken identity and overzealous assumptions about their criminal intent. Trayvon's case is now in the hands of the state's attorney. They'll decide whether or not to bring charges against his killer. And lawyers for the family are asking the Department of Justice to intervene. But whatever happens in the court, we should all remember this. Despite Zimmerman having injuries consistent with self-defense, he also had a gun. Trayvon had a bag of Skittles. His name is Trayvon Martin. When innocent children are killed, when their parents are left to wonder if their children's lives matter at all, at least we can remember their names.